you've been doing this for a really long time. And now you have this huge match with the NWA with uh, Trevor Murdoch for the, for the world title. And then kind of tell us a little bit about your NWA experience so far. So, um, uh, going all the way back. Um, I took a break just, uh, you know, during the pandemic and stuff, trying to figure out what I was going to do. You know, uh, I loved my wrestling career, but I didn't feel like I was ready to, to hang it up. And a lot of times you see guys that, uh, get other opportunities outside of the ring and, you know, they don't look back. Well, I mean, every time I was sitting in the chair in Gutfeld or sitting in a Fox News building, I'm looking at my phone, seeing who, what was going on in AEW, WWE, like watching my friends, you know, uh, you know Bobby Lashley and, and Drew and, and, and guys who were so kind to me when I first got in the game like yourself. And, and uh, you know, Swagger is one of my favorite guys. I, yeah. think I still owe him like, I think I owe him like 20 matches. I think he carried me for like two years <laughs> in the WWE at house shows. But, um, and I was just like, it just wasn't, just wasn't ready to walk away from it, you know? And um, there's that saying that some of us are wrestlers first and everything else is kind of extra. And I think you can relate because I mean, you've had an amazing career outside of the ring as well. I mean, your mm -hmm. household name, uh, Fozzie was, is a great band. You easily could have just went into music or acting and, and moved on from it, but something always brought you back. And personally, I'm glad you stayed, especially after yeah. uh, the main event the other night. Uh, I, I just can't get over how great that was. But um, I just had an itch and I wasn't ready to just let it go. And uh, so I reached out to uh, Billy and I, I was watching NWA on uh, YouTube and stuff and saw a lot of my buddies there. And uh, Aaron Sandow, who's like my favorite person to beat up, uh, he, was, <laughs> <laughs> he was out there and uh, I reached out and uh, they were like, hey, you know, uh, no promises. We'll bring you in. We'll give you a match. See, we'd see if you still got it or whatever. And uh, uh, I went in there and of course they, uh, they threw me in the fire. My first opponent was Junior Kratos and, and uh, you know, Junior was like, he was fired up. I was like, all right, so I understand this is one of the ones we're going to buy beer afterwards and, uh, <laughs> you know, just go to work. But once I got through it, once it was over, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm whatever, whatever the situation is, whatever, start my way at the bottom, whatever you want, man, just tell me what to do, uh, you know, what you want from me and I'll, I'll put in the work. And so, it just kind of went from there. There was no expectations on, on Billy's part. And, um, you know, you just kind of momentum starts building and you start, you know, once you get your first one, you start to get your legs back and you start to think because I was concerned because I had been sitting on my ass for, you know, during the pandemic, following the rules mm -hmm. and doing everything remote. And uh, I don't think it really dawned on me until my single was on. And I was getting ready to walk out uh, against Kratos and I walked by the mirror and I went, shit, like, oh, we got a lot of work. <laughs> We got a lot of work to do, you know, and uh, in, in our business, you can be a super heavyweight and lean on guys. But after, you know, this, that can only take you so far. And uh, if, you're, if your footwork isn't there, if you're not, if you're not able to keep up, then you're really disgracing the, the sport that you love. So uh, I had a lot of work to do. And, but luckily, there was a lot of pandemic bellies going around. So <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't the only one. But, uh, you know, when you walk around, you know, at 350 on a good day, uh, you can't you can't uh, show up to at least compete at a championship level at 385 395 pounds. Just in my opinion, uh, in today's in today's game, uh, the guys are so much more athletic, so much quicker. And um, you know, thanks to guys like Big Show and Kane, you just can't do the you know right. oh one one bump <laughs> like you got to work. Uh, and so the game has changed for the for the big guy, but. Um, you know, and it was just a process, and then momentum started building, and then, unfortunately, the first guy I see is Pope, and he's got, he's got that NWA World Television Championship, and I was like, Dusty had that, Mike Rotundo had that, you know, all the guys that, that Nikita, all the guys that I looked up to, Arm, Tully, Nagy, TA, uh, and I was like, sorry, Riz, <laughs> I'm coming for you, and, uh, you know, and once I got my hands on it, I was like, just... It just continued, the momentum just continued to grow. And then um, I showed up to Fox with my world television championship. And they were like, uh, what, what's going on? I said, I'm, you wouldn't ask Muhammad Ali not to have his championship. So don't <laughs> ask me. So at first Fox, Fox was a little like, how are they going to take you seriously? They took me, I'm a champion. He takes the champion seriously. And, sure. and uh, as it showed up and then uh, they just asked me one question. They said, why? 
I said, for everyone before me that held this title, for everyone, uh, you guys don't, wrestling doesn't get enough credit for the amount of stars outside of the ring. And when we agreed to this, when I signed with Fox, I said, you can tell me what movies I can do, but you can't tell me where and when to wrestle. And they agreed to that. So what started out was to prove a point. Maybe, you know, it was a little bit of a, little bit of a middle finger to some of the people who always got something to say about uh, people in our business and whatnot. But uh, before you knew it, people who never watched are watching. And the cool part is because there's a, a large contingent of, uh, i say this nice way, uh, older fans uh, that watch Fox News that grew up on watching NWA and Georgia Championship Wrestling and and they were going, I haven't seen that title in years. Like it's been around, you know, and all of a sudden they're now they want to go to shows and stuff. And uh and so it's been it was been a nice mix to kind of bring the two worlds together. Uh understanding that on TV wrestling works with anything, but when you're in the ring, there's no time for politics. So there's a there's a fine line there, but mm-hmm. um you can have it all in, in terms of if your work is right and the NWA schedule. Uh, works really well with my Fox schedule. So I was just able to continue to step up and improve. And then, uh, you know, I don't want the, the shit with Nick and uh, Billy fell apart or whatever. And uh, I had been number one contender for about four months. But typically with this championship, what they had was is that after your seventh title defense, you basically traded in hmm. for uh, a title shot. And okay. I, went, I went to Billy and said, this isn't the title that you trade in. And I listed the men before me, and I said, "It'd be the only way you get this title is if you capture the world heavyweight championship, and then you surrender it afterwards, like in a tournament and stuff." And then I, he was like, "Well, do you have any evidence of this?" I said, "Yeah, Midnight Express were the United States Tag Team Champions. They they faced Arn and Tully for the World Tag Team Championships, and for <laughs> two weeks on TV, they held both titles, and then they uh, surrendered the United States Tag Team title. And there was a tournament; everybody wins." So it's the, it's the same thing. And, uh, you know, then Pat said, we'll get back to you and let you know. And they said, okay, we're going to lift the stipulation. You no longer have to surrender the title. So, um, and that's, of course, why I was able to have nine and ten title defenses going into into this. So I was able to rewrite history a little bit, you know. And, uh, of course, speaking to the first ever unified <laughs> world champion, uh, you would respect that. And, you again, and no one expected it because uh, – the two top guys in the country, in the world, on the planet, the Rock and Stone Cold, mm. both you beat them both in one night and make history. So uh, I, this is not on the the grand stage that is, but this is up there. There's some chance to be the first uh, world television champion and NWA champion. So it'll be my own little uh, nook of history, and uh, they can't take because it, it's never been done. So no, they can't take it away from me. So 